What's drug abuse? What is addiction? What's the difference between abuse and addiction? Are some drugs more addictive than others? What does an addict look like? What is a drug? Can you get addicted to medicine? Why can't somebody who's addicted to drugs just quit? Before I got into my own usage, um, I guess I heard all the same things about drugs and alcohol. Um, they're bad, they ruin lives, you know, but it wasn't gonna be me. I wasn't an addict, I wasn't an alcoholic, and I was smarter than drugs and alcohol. We know the scientific evidence is very clear. Addiction is a brain disease. So it's very clear after decades of brain research that addiction is a biological disease, that it does result from changes in the brain. It's not a mystery. The one thing that ties all drugs of abuse in common, at least drugs that you can become addicted to, is the ability to stimulate dopamine release. That's fairly well believed throughout the scientific community right now. Um, whether it be nicotine, alcohol, marijuana, cocaine, amphetamine, heroin, all of these drugs stimulate dopamine release. And that is a major event, perhaps not the only event, but the major event in what makes them reinforcing, rewarding, and makes you want to do them again. It's an interesting question as to if all the information we've learned about adults and how their brains respond to alcohol and drugs, if that applies in the same way to, to kids and to teenagers. And there's increasing awareness that we probably cannot apply all that information to adolescents. And this is because the adolescent brain is still developing. It's not all done and fixed yet. It's kind of a, a moving target because there's a number of different processes that are still going on in the brain throughout the adolescent years, even into the 20s. People could look at going to treatment and dealing with the addiction no different than going to the hospital to deal with a broken leg, a broken arm, something that you have to, uh, to go see the doctor for, some sort of physical ailment, then I think it takes away some of that moral judgment that's often in play with kids that, that go to treatment. There are people in the general public who feel, well, this is a relapsing disease, and, and once you get it, it you're never going to get better. And those things really aren't true. If we look at the science base, if we look at long-term studies, addictive disorders respond to treatment very much the same as other chronic disorders like diabetes or hypertension. They do tend to be lifelong struggles, but if you break down the studies, what you find in general is about a third of the people who receive treatment do extraordinarily well. About another third improve, but they don't achieve a complete cure. And then and the last third of people seem to be somewhat resistant to treatment. And for those people, what we have to do is harm reduction. We have to find ways to try to mitigate the effects of the disorder that they have that doesn't respond to treatment. So addiction behaves pretty much the same way as other chronic diseases. Some people are going to have a great result from treatment. Others will have a partial response. And then there's a group of resistant individuals that we have to find other approaches and supports to help them. It doesn't matter how smart you are or how pretty you are, how cool you are, or what kind of family you come from, whether you come from a wealthy family or a poor family or a stable family or a broken family. It doesn't matter. This disease has no qualifications. It is anybody and everybody. Yeah.